الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم. All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa taala who gave us facial muscles to smile. All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa taala who gave us excitement, who gave us the part of our frontal lobe that allows us to say that was awesome. All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa taala who gave us not only the ability to enjoy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ability to take the sweet lessons but to keep smiling. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the opportunity to learn, to educate, to have a good time and to also be in the presence of those of great knowledge. Of both of the people on the stage, I have a, a different type but an intimate relationship with them. And with that, I'd like to set the precedence for my talk because I want you to go right off of where we left off. That concept of brotherhood, the relationship between Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these select men who, at many occasions, I want to distance from the religious perspective. From some occasions, it was said that the water that came off of the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam during wudu, they would catch that and rub it on themselves. Now, that I don't expect that from any of us to anyone. There was a spiritual. There was a. Prophetic connection to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but at the same time there was a very different connection. At the same time there was a very, I don't know if I can use the word friendship. There was a friendship with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that these men, radiyallahu taala anhu, rich and poor alike, were able to experience. And if I don't like it. What is it? Yeah, that's it. Islam. There's a chair here. Islam. It's Islam. And that experience, I think, is very, very unique. So what I would like to do is, I'd like to start. With, can anyone tell me what the first talk was about? The first talk that I gave around four o'clock. What surah did we do? Huh? Zoomer, what number is that? Ah. What ayahs did we do? Whoa. Our son, they're religious. <laughs> ah, mashallah. Okay, so what we're gonna do together be it's not Surah 49, Ayah number uh, Surah 49. We're gonna start from eight, nine, and ten. If you have the opportunity, I'd like you to read the whole surah. I think it's only 18 ayahs. I think it's about 18 ayahs. Surah Hujurat, 49. Hafsa. Yeah, roughly 12 and eight. It's 18. It's 18. So today, be it now, we're gonna try to tackle eight. Maybe nine, but I want you to realize that after you leave these talks, I took notes for exactly what Sheikh Altaf was talking about because it gives you the opportunity to go back. You will remember your smiles, but you won't remember why you smile. So make small notations. Khatib al Baghdadi, he has a wonderful book. It's called The Etiquettes of the Student of Knowledge. And in this book, he highlights a hadith. Not narrated by him. He brings this hadith there that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Trap knowledge." I mean, it's the main session. If you were going to take notes somewhere, if you're going to benefit from a re real knowledgeable people, I would take notes. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Trap knowledge." The companions asked him, "How, ya Rasulullah? How do you trap knowledge?" Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded, "Bil kitab in your books and." One of our missing colleagues, uh, Yasir Qadi, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, he has a wonderful 60-minute lecture on this, on the etiquettes of the student of knowledge. And Sheikh Yasir Birjas, who is with us today, he also has a wonderful lecture on the etiquettes. It's a speech for, uh, relating to the hadith of Adab al-Mufrad. I don't want you to leave here just with my talk. I want you to leave here with avenues to continue. A great 40-minute talk, 30-minute talk. I would rather you hear little of me, but more names, more lectures. The etiquettes of the student of knowledge. Sheikh Yasir Birjas has a lecture on Adab al Mufrad. It's Imam Bukhari's book on etiquettes and mannerism. Seek these things. Uh, Sheikh Al Taf has a few lectures on halal too. And I would, if you had fun here, imagine what you could do when you were taking notes at home. So let's bring it back. So today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ayahs and we read them as we read them fresh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is merciful and the most merciful because He gave me the chance to stand here. 
And he is the most beneficent, the most merciful, because he gave me the opportunity to benefit from the scholars who had mercy on a young person. <laughs> indeed, inna. There is a emphasis here. Indeed, the believers are brothers. I want you to write this down, though. What word do I say after inna al mu'minuna? What's the word? Ikhwa, right? So ikhwa means what? It means brothers. If you look at the translation, it actually says brethren. What's another word for brothers in Arabic? Akhun, right? Ikhwan. There are two words. The actual Arabic phrase, not in the Quran, would be inna mal mu'minuna ikhwan. Because ikhwa means what? When you go ahead, jot down. Ikhwa means blood brother. It means blood brother. Abdul Nasser's blood brother is Abdullah. That is Ikhwa. Ikhwan means what? Brotherhood, brethren. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us, guys? Did he say, yes, this is your brother, be nice to him? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us? He called us blood brothers, blood, blood sisters. You know when sometimes you're, you're standing and someone comes and attacks your brother, and you're like, Man, you know your brother did something wrong, but you stand up for them. Because it's just your brother, yo. It's my boy. But all of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes this concept of you looking to someone else as a blood brother. He's looking to you and telling you, your believer is your blood brother. So, if your little brother did do something stupid, give him a chance. If your little sister went and she put on your hijab and it didn't look the way you wanted it to, because you're older and you know how to do things, she's just little. It was a mistake. But when it comes to ikhwan, we tend to take the title of that's my Muslim brother so I have to correct him. And when I correct him, I'm going to make him realize I know and you don't know. Goodbye. So in this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed the believers are like brethren, like a family. If your little brother makes a mistake, you hide his sin and you make sure no one else sees it. But when you start looking at Muslims as yeah, they're, we're all one family. We're all just a family. You know how we treat our family. You know how we communicate. And what's the ayah after this? If we could, I mean, I have a few moments. What's the ayah? What is the words after this? Fa, fa. Listen to this word one more time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you guys are like blood relatives or you are like true brothers and sisters. So when you have some difficulty, there's some turmoil comes between you. Make sulh. Rectify the mistake because mistakes happen, guys. I borrowed her hijab and they had sequences on it and it fell off. A real someone came to me. Uh, my sister, she borrowed a hijab and it had sequences on it. When she returned it, it had and I will love you. Nine less sequences. I was like, baby girl, you got too much extra time sitting there. One, two. I was really, I was like, I was like, can you forgive it? No. I want, I, they wanted me to make like a sunnah. And I was like, I asked sister, I was like, can you buy seven sequences? She goes, yeah. I was like, go buy seven black sequences and give it. I, the fiqh, I guess the fiqh is to rectify it. So, but think about the love that she went to uh, Joanne Fabric, brought seven black sequences. She didn't want to talk to the girl anymore. She gave me the sequences and I walked out. I was like, you crazy. And sisters, don't laugh because there are still five brothers typing sequence <laughs> into the dictionary. It's the glittery thing. It's the thing that makes you go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, now they got it. Now they understood. Alhamdulillah. Don't, don't laugh. I'm just, I'm just building off of the Sheikh's 9 o'clock spread 9.15. That was awesome, yo. If you can be smooth, that was awesome. But let's go. Now watch this. Blood brothers and sisters are bound by family. They're bound by body. This is really important, friends. And I, I want to get to something big. If I can't get there, I'm going to have to turn over to Sheikh Yasser Birjas. So I'm going to talk, but I want to get to something that I've never, ever, ever said. And it has to do with the two men on the stage. So, uh, Mullah Abdul Nasser gave me all of this talk, I credit him. When you break between family, Abdullah is literally, we're like family. We live together, eat together, we know each other's secrets. 
When something breaks, I fall back on the fact he's family. What makes Muslims family? Baina akhawaykum. What's the next word? What's the next? Right? The next word is turhamu. Friends, the thing that makes us family is the fact that she got up this morning, she's Muslim, and the brothers from Orland Park, they got up there Muslim. So when, what happens? When the glue starts to go out, when your family bond starts to break, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now watch the segue here. Where can you, say I get into a fight with a brother who recited today. But what's your name? Firaz. Firaz. I'm sorry. So I got into argument. So he's like, oh, you didn't remember my name. What kind of shake are you? And I was like, well, I'm a shakey shake. And he's like, well. <laughs> so now we have a problem. Watch this. Watch this. In the regular world, I grew up in New York City. Forget about forgetting a name. If you looked at someone, I was at an, an inappropriate establishment once. And a huge fight broke out. And then I was, I was like, oh, man, what happened? Did he say something about, oh, this? And wallahi, I got down to the bottom of it. And the guy goes, he looked at me. I was like, and then? He looked at me. So, but now watch this, watch this. Can I get into a real fight with him if I know five times a day I'm going to be doing something, standing shoulder to shoulder by him? Am I going to be able to do it? Press pause here, rewind the tape. Mu'mins are like blood brethren. What the blood that flows between our veins is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where do you get taqwa 17 times a day? <laughs> 17 times a day. I stand next to him and he stands up and we make salah. We could have just got into a real, I don't know how he prays. That's like, I don't know. <laughs> this, I saw the, I love you guys. This, this is the new madhab, okay? Madhab. Okay, so we're going to pray like this. But think about this. How much could you fight with this guy if 17 times a day you're loving him? You're, this is love. Where how much... Guys, really, let's, let's pull it back in because I want to get to one thing. How far would you be willing to go in a fight? How far would you be willing to go in a fight with someone if you knew you were going to be standing next to them in a salah? Tomorrow morning, myself, Sheikh Yasser, I, I think a few scholars will, will be speaking and I'll be on the panel too. So a few scholars and Brother Rissam will be talking about the masjid. Can you have beef at the masjid? Can you count your sequences if you're going to the masjid? I don't know. You don't have time. But let's move forward here. La'allakum turhamun. It could, be, it could have been la'allakum tattakun. La'allakum tuflihun would have worked really well here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, use the paste, the glue, the cement, the pins to bind yourself together. That is taqwa so that la'allakum so that with a little bit of effort, notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word la'allakum. It could have been sent in a shorter grammatical form. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses more words, ta'akkada, it means with emphasis. With a little bit of effort, you can have mercy on each other. Now let's get real. Let's get real. This is all wonderful talk. One ayah, we're blood, we're supposed to go to the masjid. Ain't no one going to the masjid. Everyone's going to sleep. So now let's take it, let's make something real out of it. We want to go to the masjid. And we want to look, we want to pray next to the guy who touches the foot on this side. And this guy, you know, when you make salah, some people touch their feet. Um, I have seen in the musalla and I loved it. I was so happy. One brother, he was touching his foot on this side because this brother praying next to him touched his foot. And on this side, the brother didn't touch his feet. So this side wasn't touching. Do you know how much tolerance you need to have? Forget about he stepped on my shoes or he was talking about... He's accommodating the way he prays and that made me think about something. Why did the companions and how did the companions love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much? I want to show you love. And I use the word friend and I'm using it so we can you have it in English. He was undoubtedly the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala never said yo, never said what's up. He never referred to him casually but they were friends. But look at the way the friendship works, guys. And I want you to try to use a label like this. Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, an older, settled man in the community, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, a best friend of Rasulullah. I mean, your boy is your boy when you're in a cave and people are about to kill you and you can confess to your, to your beloved, and 
I'm afraid, Ya Rasulullah. These two men were sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So what's first happening? We're spending time together. We're spending time together. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was laying down. So we, we, this religious notion goes away a little bit quicker. And his head was resting on the thigh of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. This is a very relaxed, intimate, and now someone can say, this is what's going on in my life. So number one, when someone comes to you with a problem, your friend, don't get all religious and stiff on them. But here, it got amazing. The head of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is leaning on the thigh of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Now I want you to listen to this. Guys, I want you to think about it. So the cloak of Rasulullah, his lower garment, and I want you to think about this like baller shorts, you know like basketball shorts, the long ones, the long basketball shorts. When you lay down, sometimes those shorts kind of come up just a little bit. It, I mean, you're just playing ball, you're, you're laying down. So the short comes up just a little bit. Maybe your patella was showing. But Umar radiallahu anh, this is awrah for men, right? So we're gonna, but he's with his friends. They care about him, they love him. So it's a little bit is a little bit is shown, but Umar radiallahu anh is settled. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, no one's even noticing. Who walks in? Who walks in? Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an walks in. A younger, very bashful, someone who's still a friend, guys. Watch the level of religiosity doesn't change. It accommodates. So Uthman radiallahu anh, who didn't remove all of his lower garments to take a shower by himself, walks into the room. Rasulullah sallam pulls down the cloak. But no, never a gesture like, oh shoot, yo, the religious guy's coming, yo. And you know how we do that? When I was younger and I would walk into a room, I'm not joking, it would be, yo, Wissam's coming, yo, stop. Oh, okay, okay. And I felt like, oh, great, life of the party, Wissam. <laughs> right? And then my friends would go to the mall, but no one would go to the mall. And Wallahi Lazim, it took me a long time to figure out what this meant. So I never, I was in, doing tahfiz and whatnot here in Chicago, Mawlana Abdullah Salim, IIE, long live. So I, I, I would go to the mall with my friends, and eventually I would go and they would do this. And they would nudge me until I'm a bit, I was bigger than them always. Till I turned over and I took my friend's name. I'm like, Abdullah, you've been nudging me in the ribs for 20 minutes, man. I never come to the mall with you guys. You never invite me. And then my cousin Atif came around to Abdullah and said, Abdullah, Wassam doesn't know. <laughs> the nudging was to get the attention on the longitudinal axis of certain XX chromosomes. Translated into short, he was pointing out the shorties. <laughs> I didn't get this is the shorties and my ribs hurt. <laughs> didn't make any sense to me. But I felt awkward. Was Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. Now, the patella or no patella, we could do fiqh till we're blue in the face here, guys. But we accommodated the sister who covers her face. We accommodated, we, the, our friends. We might be going out to a theater, but Wissam and Abdul Nasser don't choose to go to theaters. You could do fiqh till you're blue in the face, but yo, he's my boy. Accommodation. Even at the religious level, yo, this is one of the religious guys, and this is one of the al Maghrib guys. Oh, okay, I get it. So it's spiritual, you know, that side of the fence. It's Zaytuna al Maghrib against each other, right? Nah, it's never been like that. I mean, it's never been with our own scholars who represent these things. So I want you to keep this in mind before we strive away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accommodated and loved people at their level. And that's what it's going to take. But we don't love each other because of four or five major things. And if I can at the end, before I get my little card, he's writing a card quickly guys. Okay, learn, learn Islam. Before we finish up, our brotherhood, inam al mu'minuna ikhwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up and we won't get to go into the ayah, but let's just start at the beginning. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la yaskar qawm min qawm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after telling us that we're bounded by the blood of taqwa together, and that we must pray, live, and love together, He says, O ye who believe, do not ridicule each other. Four levels of ridicule. Number one. You know the brothers from Orland Park, they're all Arab. 
And you know the brothers on the north side of Chicago, they're all Desi. And yani, uh, we love them, but we don't hang out together. This is our first level, the Arab, the non-Arab, and I will tell you the administration, for example, of a masjid here, it's Orland Park. After the administration, I gave khutbah what, last weekend? When was the fundraising dinner? Yeah, this past weekend. I finished giving khutbah and all of the Arab uh, board of directors all came and said, Mawlana Abdullah Sim, you must have studied with him. We know him, we respect him. So again, at one level it could be East Coast, West Coast, this Aqidah, that Aqidah fighting. It could be Arab, non-Arab, that could be fighting. But at the top level, are any of those people actually fighting each other? No. But we're down here. We're down here saying, yeah, this guy is in trouble with that guy. So it's either Arab or non-Arab. And let's go to the next level. We're in Chicago, guys. Let's face it. Chicago has this huge rift of, I study with this sheikh and he studies with those sheikhs. He, these people are deviant and these people are rightly guided, so I'm not going to stay with them. Friends, we're up here talking to you about loving each other. Maybe we should just give a talk, first talk, called Stop Hating Each Other. No, really. Just, please, just be. And now comes the next level. And I call this level wavering religiosity. The hijabi doesn't like the non-hijabi. The niqabi or the hijabi looks at the niqabi and says, I know you're judging me. I can't see you, but you're judging me. <laughs> and I've no, friend, my family covers. She's all, and she's like, she'll come home and I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, everyone thinks I hate them. I'm like, how? <laughs> I mean, Sheikh Yasser has spoken to my wife and she's like bubbly and talking and I'm like, oh, so how'd it go with the sister? It didn't go so well. What happened? Uh, no one said salam. Everyone thought I was judging them because this was was putting everyone away. It's the wavering levels of religiosity. I said this last night in California. I'll say this here. Open the door. If the women who committed zina could come to the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I ain't no problem. You talking about problem? My oh, I my glasses are wavering. I can't. Fifty-five minutes. Salah. Let's wrap it up, friends. If the people who committed sin could come to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said, "I drank," if Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah's neighbor, who used to get, please apologize for the language, Sheikh Machayef, he was piss drunk every other day. Abu Hanifa's neighbor was piss drunk. I mean, like it was in his piss. He was drunk every night. Yeah, that's why. That's why it's called piss drunk, by the way. Seriously, when you come to the hospital, it's a medical friend. So it, it. I got away with that one. Right. <laughs> it's recorded, but Abdullah has his recording, so. <laughs> You're know, like, no, it's not. No, Islam. <laughs> Niqab. Okay, good, done. The point is, his neighbor was able to come to him, and he bailed his neighbor out of jail. Look it up. Dr. Hisham Al Awadi has a wonderful book uh, and a CD set, The Four Great Imams. Imam Abu Hanifa bailed out his neighbor. Why did he get arrested, by the way? For being drunk. Bail them out. So then, why can't we accommodate? Lastly, and the best, to be only for Chicago. And you have given me my right, so I will give you something that I have given no other talk before. Guys, aren't we a little bit more comfortable talking to Stephanie than we are to Amina? Aren't we more comfortable talking to Jerry than we are to talk to Abdullah? Why? As soon as you talk to the MSA brother, he's judging you on how high your pants are, whether you wore kufi today. When he was playing basketball, yo, he threw an elbow. It's like all of a sudden when you speak to a Muslim, they pull out a radar. <laughs> There's this religious city radar. And why aren't you talking to Fatima anymore? Oh, well, Fatima wore pants. Okay, so Fatima wore pants. I'm not joking. It's not two, I was here in Chicago. It's not 2001. A sister was walking and her uh, jilbab got caught in the escalator. I want you to think about these things. Got caught in the escalator, yeah, it was really nasty. So two very important things, I never was able to tell anyone. Got caught in the escalator, she didn't do the smart thing, take it off, uh, because I asked her later, why didn't you take it off? What would the people have said? She was wearing clothes underneath. Now watch, she, it gets caught. She trips on the jilbab, she falls four, four or five stairs. This is the best friends. She falls, I watched it, and I'm walking, it was when it was in the, Isna used to be in the big convention center, there was a big escalator, and I was like, guys, do something. 
I give you my word. People stepped over. Why? Why? Don't want to touch her. Oh, yeah. Gets, no, no, it gets better. It gets better. So then I looked at the guys, and Mawlana Umar Husseini was there, everyone was there, and we're all Hafiz school students, like, okay, we'll do something. We built a hatred fortress where the Jilbabi couldn't take off her Jilbab because someone would have said, oh my God, who's going to tell her parents? Right? So who's going to tell her parents? And then we did the, oh my God, this girl has fallen, I'm going to step over her because God forbid somebody judge that I touched a sister. But she's your sister. There's the first level, and here comes the second level, and I'll end on this. I have to give you a date on this. I'll end on this. I want to give you real beef. It was 2005. And someone had listened to a lecture I gave in Atlanta. I talked about Hadith 1883 of Riyadh Salihin. And I quoted the Hadith. And at the end of the Hadith, I connected this Hadith to a Hadith in Muslim. Someone in Atlanta met a young Altaf Hussein in 2005 and said there's this guy who connects hadith and continues saying them like one so he said what any genuine human being would have said no that's not right so what you so then he was asked is this uh, person you want to tell me who it is no 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 it's just some guy so then he went on those people then didn't come back to me they went online and posted Al-Taq Hussein writes a reputation of Wissam Ahmed Sharif. And I did what any dork would do. I was like, yo, who's this guy? <laughs> Where, who is this, what? Where did he live? <laughs> no, I was, like, I was a young. I, look, I looked at him, I was like. Because <laughs> one head nod is good. So I was, that's what's up. But that's done. So I looked him up and wallahi lazim. I knew that he was going to be at a fundraising dinner 2005. He went to a fundraising dinner in College Park, Maryland for Dar es Salaam. So I went to rectify my wrong. And I met the Sheikh in a parking lot. I'm not joking. It was coincidental. It was coincidental. I don't want to play it up too big. And I walked up to him and I put my hand and I said, Assalamu alaikum. And I started that way. Typical arrogant New Yorker who, who can read two hadith. So now all of a sudden he's a scholar. He said, My name is Hussam Sharif. And he looked back at me and said, Oh, you're Hussam. And he hugged me. And he said, I have to go. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> And my friends are like, Yo, who's that? I'm like, That's Al Tafu <laughs> Friends. Friends, I never pursued it and I learned that day that we create beef. We create anger, we create the ox, the opposite of love. Because we have nothing else to do and I will say it here and I will leave you on this. If you couldn't make it in the Desi Kings gang, if you couldn't make it as a thug on the street, do not bring your thug ways to Islam. If you couldn't make it with some clique in the school or some group that was hardcore gangsters, don't bring it to Salafi, Sufi, Tablighi, Islam. Because this is not a gang. And we don't have wars to fight. We have wars to defend against. And if you stand for MSA, then you stand for must stand in front of Allah when you have a problem. And we now have that opportunity because you heard two people talk about love. But you know when we walk out of here, someone's post, someone's Facebook, someone's comment on Wissam's hadith about ma adna ahlul jannati manzila of Riyadh al-Salihin is going to be taken to him. And he was asked, that's incorrect. And I ask today for my sheikh's forgiveness for even propagating this and for meeting his I did shake his hand originally arrogantly friends it will take a step we will make the step together and we will love each other la yasqar qawmun min qawmin asa read the rest of the ayah on your own after all of this ridicule don't let one group make fun of another Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends by saying women don't make fun of another group because you don't know which one is better 
we do bad things, we do. Yes, guys? We do bad things. Sometimes we say bad things. Let's clean our hearts. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I end only on one thing. Every single point from today's talk except the beef was given to me by Mawlana Abdul Nasser because I was not prepared for today's talk. I was under the impression that we were doing the masjid talk. So for that reason, I attribute all good from this talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every point that you benefited from was because of Mawlana uh, uh, Shaykh Abdul Nasser. May Allah give him health and if you would like the opportunity to benefit. He gave me this talk in six to eight minutes. He gave me every, literally, he was sitting there with his feet up, but eight guys, he's like, oh, you need to talk? Boom. He went, Ch -ch -ch. Islam. Come on. Mawlana Abdul Nasser will be hosting a Quran intensive for 30 days. I would benefit from it, June 1st to June 30th. If you want to benefit what I did in eight minutes for 30 days in Quran intensive, abayyina.com. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.